Welcome back to the Arise interview where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anya Golden. Now it's been several years since Nigeria replaced military dictatorship with democracy and yet its politics still bubbles with intrigue, instability, violence, corruption and injustice. Some say the country itself feels like hell with its never-ending ethnic politics, poverty, unemployment employment and rising crime. In the midst of this recurring nightmare, how can Nigeria's hopes and dreams ever be realized? Well, the new Nigeria group says it set its sights on transforming Nigeria through principled, moral and spiritual strength. They've set out their core values, including knowledge, industry, integrity, patriotism and justice. And they say they aim to make Nigeria a first world country. So how are they going to do it? Well, they say they plan to mobilize like-minded Nigerians to install enlightened, visionary and committed leadership that will motivate the country to move in the right direction. Well, the new Nigeria group is preparing to launch its national stakeholders meeting in Lagos, from where their founder, Mazi Sam Ohwabungwa, joins me now. Great to see you, Mazi Sam. Thank you very much indeed for your patience. I know you're a busy man, so we appreciate the time that you've taken to talk to us. I mean, it's very easy, isn't it, to list the things that you would like to do to transform this country. Quite another to make that happen. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with you, Charles, but the point that it is doable, why is it doable is that if you look around the world, look around the countries of this world, look at the countries that were at the same level with Nigeria in the 70s, countries like Singapore, uh, Japan, uh, uh, South Korea, they, they were able to transit from the of a, a chronically underperforming nation to become global players. They became global first world nations. Other countries have done it, and I don't see why Nigeria cannot do it if we have the right leadership, with the right mind, with the right orientation, uh, with the right uh, uh, vision. We will be able to do it because what it takes to get things done is to look at the people and look at the resources and look at the systems. And we have resources in this country, we have the people is to put the right system in place, and then we can fly. I believe we can, because we're not talking about um, uh, you know, reinventing the wheel. People have done so. And this, in this country, we've seen sparks of progress, of hasty, sustained economic growth. But then we just re retrogressed, and we have remained on that decline. So I and those that work with me in the new Nigeria group, which I am the convener, believe that the time has come to take back our country and put out and release all the forces, the forces, the human forces, the technological forces, the financial forces, and then all the networking and the synergies that we need to make with our diaspora Nigerians, with other world meaning people in the world who have been waiting for Nigeria to happen. Charles, you know that the world has waited for this country to happen. And it's becoming as if it's an impossible task. We want to prove that it is possible. So how are you going to get about doing that? How are you going to prove that it is possible? What, what, what are the steps that are going to get you there? First is to, uh, uh, as we're making an appeal to Nigerians, we are creating a network, uh, uh, leveraging contacts, and bringing like-minded citizens, people who are, who are completely dissatisfied with what is going on in this country, who, like me, have been on the sides watching and hoping praying, sometimes writing, co organizing conferences as we've done in the Nigeria Economic Summit Group at Infinitum, we've done in, in NECA, we've done in MAN, we've done in every other aspect. They have been waiting, but the time has come, they are coming together to band it together to get a proper place. And when we get that proper place and that proper platform, we can then present ourselves to Nigerians and say, we are willing to work with you and work for you to bring us away from this chronic underperformance, which is because we seem to have not quite understood how wealth is created, how to energize Nigerians. I mean, this country can energize the youth. 
We can energize the middle-level manpower we have. We can energize all the intellectuals we have to be able to sort out our problem. So it's getting people to work. And the first thing is to make Nigeria an investment-friendly environment, investment-friendly nation. Because as you know, Charles, what drives development all over the world is investment, both international or foreign investment and domestic environment investment. If we make Nigeria investment-friendly, provide a buckwheel of incentives, enforce law and order, Nigeria will fly in every sector. Is it in productive sector? Is it the service sector? Is it in transforming our natural resources like oil and gas, like agricultural food into uh, adding value and exporting them? Diversifying our economy away from oil. We've spoken about this forever and it looks like it's not ever going to be done. We are determined to break the barrier, to cause changes to happen. So we're going to need the people and we're going to have people who are knowledgeable. And right now we're putting together um, you know, a, a very strong intellectual force that is developing our plans and strategies. And those plans and strategies, I will tell you, Charles, are nothing new. They've been on the board. If you go and read all the reports of the Nigerian Economic Summit from Summit 1 to now, what we are going to do is already written there. If you go to Vision 2010 document, Vision 2020 document, Nigerian Political Reform Conference, Political um, Conference of uh, 2014, Nigerians have spent thousands of uh, man hours developing strategies, developing methods and plans how to harness the resources, how to build a public-private partnership, how to get investment flow into our country, how to design the system in a manner that corruption can be taken care of. Right now, we do sing and dancing, but the substrates and the system to prevent corruption is not there. So these are the kind of things we want to engineer. And I want to tell you that many Nigerians are willing, if they are given an opportunity. So, for so long, many people that think like me I felt that our place was not in politics, it's in, it's in advocacy, it's, it's in pontificating, and it's in designing strategies. But we have fallen short in implementation. And that's what we're saying. We need to get good people who have shown a P degree, who have shown a track record of implementation. Leaders that have competence, which they've shown by the work they have done, the businesses they've run, the, 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 the organization they have run, and things they have done. Then if we should see their competence, the next is their, is their character. Do they have the right character to model uh, uh, for Nigerians? Because Nigerian youth are looking for people that they can follow. If we have the people with the right character, with the right integrity, who tell you a thing and you believe them, who make promises and keep them, I do not deny their promises with, 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 with a wave of the hand. And people who have the courage to do the right things. Charles, there are so many things that need to be done. We've been talking about deregulating our oil, our, 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 our PMS, forever, since, since Obasanjo came to power. And we have been unable to do it. I think part of it is lack of courage and the ability to talk to the people and carry them, to show the sincerity, to be transparent, to say, this is where we are. And if we get this done, this is how it's going to what is good, where, we're going to, where, where we're going to get to. We may have to make sacrifices now, but those sacrifices will pay off. Nigerians are looking for, who, for leaders who are sincere, who can talk to them, who can feel them, who go to the market they go to, who, who travel on the roads they travel to. In the last six months, I've traveled to 34 states in this country, establishing the new Nigeria group. I know every corner, I know every bend, I know every pothole in the country. I know all, all what the people feel. Part of our problem is that most of our leaders are disconnected from the people. And, and therefore, they may not be able to understand what their issues are. If we connect with the people and prove that we are sincere, they will believe us. And they will be able to make so, some of the sacrifices we need to break out of this circle and this conundrum of underperformance, chronic poverty, joblessness that have turned our country into uh, a high level of social equilibrium, resulting in, in, in some kinds of uh, social revolt, as you see it in the criminal activities, going all over. Some of them are merely social revolt. People are just dissatisfied that the country they have hoped for to happen has not happened. And the early... Okay. Well, I mean, Mazi Sam, you, you, you've really set out, you've set out um, what your objectives are, and, um, but we're not entirely clear on, on 
how you're going to do it. I mean, the, the new Nigeria group, is, is it a political party? Is it some kind of movement that's going to metamorphose into a political party? Tell us more about what it is. Yes, right now, the new Nigeria group is a political movement. And our primary objective is to sell a vision of a new Nigeria. Charles, many people have lost hope that Nigeria is redeemable. They all they see is picture of corruption. All they see is picture of violence. All they see is picture of ethnic confusion, ethnic nationalism, uh, rebellion, uh, fight for uh, stuff and space. We are trying to change the narrative first because there is something about belief. I understand if that, uh, Mazi Samo Huabungwa. You, you, you've made that point. I'm sorry to in interrupt you, but you, you talked about ethnic conflict, ethnic competition. I mean, how, we're just talking to Ambassador John Campbell, and, and he was very clear that you're not going to wave a magic wand and all those things are going to disappear. What is the way, let's just take that one issue, for example, the fact that Nigerians focus more on their ethnicity than on their national Nigerian identity. How are you going to get them away from that and make them feel more Nigerian and less Igbo, Yoruba or Hausa? It is a simple matter, uh, 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 Charles. What, people, what is causing the division is lack of equity, of, of lack of fairness and lack of justice. Now, the first thing we're going to do is to unite the country. And how do you unite the country? This country is owned by the different groups, the ethnic groups or ethnic nationalities, they came together to form a country under the British oversight. Now, the British is far gone. Maybe we, we ought to take charge of our own fate. And what we need to do is come to the round table, the top of table I'm sitting in Arai's office here, get all the ethnic groups sitting around this table with a leader who is the president or whatever name he answers, and say, guys, this country, we started it and it worked up to a point. What has gone wrong? Where did we miss the road? Now, the Shekri person will say what his issue is. The Igbo man will say what his issue is. The Fulani man will say what his issue is. The ethnic person. And then we'll now say, okay, what's the way forward? I have always believed that if you can get the, even these current uh, issues we're having in the country, the, uh, the, 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 the chronic and unsolvable uh, 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 military or what you call insecurity problems. If the owners of the country can sit down around the table and say, we will not live here until we sort out this country. Do we want to live like a country? Do we like to live in a nation? And we say yes. We say, okay, how do we design how to live together? The way we started. We started that way, but lost it along the road. Uh, there's no magic wand. It's just for the people to agree on how to restructure their country and say, this is the way we want it organized. This is a sort of system. This is a relationship we accept. This is how we're going to do things. And when they agree, they sign off on it. And the job of our new Nigeria or anybody representing them at that level will be to run with what the people have agreed. Design a new constitution that will be satisfied. How can people be saying the 1999 constitution is not our constitution? We say a real constitution. And somebody is forcing it on them and say it must be their constitution. This is why they are crying. We need to listen to the people for, for crying aloud. We don't seem to be listening to the people. We are listening to ourselves and doing what we like. Every good leader, like I believe that we, 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 we display in, is to be a servant leader, listen to what the people want, and work with them to realize uh, Mazi it. Mazi Samo, please stay with us. We're, we're going to take a break and uh, we'll come back to you and we'll keep talking. You're watching the Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat with Mazi Sam Ohuabungwa, founder of the new Nigeria group with a focus on the 2023 presidential election. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyagulu. Now, according to my uh, current guest today, Mazi Sam Ohuabungwa, founder of the new Nigeria Group, Nigeria faces four main challenges, poverty, corruption, injustice, and insecurity. Mazi Ohuabungwa believes that if Nigeria's leadership targets poverty, this will largely solve the problem of corruption. And if you solve injustice, this will deal with the issue of insecurity. He's come up with several ways of solving the problems of 
both poverty and injustice, and both are tied to things like education, equality, healthcare, economic empowerment, the removal of all forms of discrimination, and of course, restructuring Nigeria. And Mazi Sam Ohuabunwa, founder of the New Nigeria Group, is still with me from our studios in Lagos. Thank you very much indeed for staying with us. And I apologize for interrupting you. We had to take a break. Um, but you were finishing your thoughts on how you were, what the New Nigeria Group was actually about and how it was going to get about changing things. Yes, yes, Charles. You see, there are two criti critical issues that Nigeria is dealing with now. First is the economic situation. And that's why we talk about having a vision to emerge from the doldrums of a stagnation of 61 years as a third world to become a first world. Because it is when you fix your vision that way that you'll be able to work to escape poverty, escape infrastructural underdevelopment, escape poor quality of life, escape poor life expectancy. If we do not target that way, we'll still be running around like chicken in one's position, sometimes retrogressing. Nigeria moves forward and then goes backward because there is no sustaining vision to which every party, government, public sector, private sector, NGO, and everybody, students, housewives, they need to know their role in working to achieve this first world Yes, but, but that, that's, that's, that's obviously a, a very tall order that requires massive education. Let me just ask you one thing, for example. You, 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 look at the, you talked about infrastructure and the deficit there. Everybody talks about electricity. I was reading your, your statement there of the New Nigeria Group. You talked about electricity. What is it? that in your assessment, you were the chairman of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, the most respected think tank in this country. You've run a very successful pharmacy. You've, you've thrown in your hat into the governorship ring and all of that. I mean, what is it that has prevented this country under successive administrations from achieving steady electricity in Nigeria? Well, I think it's, it's essentially um, what I call misplaced priority and inability to buy the bullet. You see, the, the electricity problem in our country is solvable. You take it in two dimensions. One is generation, one is distribution. And generation seems to be the issue where we're spending all, all sorts of money from. And today, we can, in, the, in two years, uh, Charles, we can light Nigeria up. What do we need to do? It takes 18 years to build plants. And we need private sector people. Professor Barton Naji has shown us an example. He had built a plant in Aba. Nigeria promising that if you build this plant, we'll let you uh, 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 build Aba. We, 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 we'll ring fence Aba for you. And then you can build Aba and supply them electricity for 24-7. Uh, now, what are we going to do? We should build a lot, give a lot more of such individuals to build plants and then ring fence, put two people to build plants and supply Lagos. One person Kaduna, another person Kano, one Portacot. Well, and the problem you do with that, that uh, Mazi Sam, I, I know the, the idea, I don't mean to keep interrupting you, but I, I had to come in there because the, the problem is that, um, I mean, I went to... Um, to Professor Barton Nagy's, it's called Geometric Power. I went to it in Aba, I went and saw it, I even filmed it. But it's still not giving the power. That, that, that's the problem that we're talking about. Nigeria has built all these, the you know, I mean, Geregu and this and that, all these power plates, but they don't give, I mean, there's no, the electricity situation hasn't changed. What are you gonna do if your new Nigeria group moved forward? How would you tackle those things? Charles, Charles, have you asked why Geometric is not producing power? They have taken money from all the development banks in the world, including some local banks, to establish a plant. Is government to just let them uh, uh, switch on, give them the opportunity to supply plant uh, power to Abba and, and build Abba and, and recover their money? Why is that a difficult thing? It is, I don't understand it, but that is the work of government. That's what leadership is all about. And if you do that in a few more places, there are Nigerians and other investors in the private world that are ready to come and build these plants. And we're not here talking about renewable energy, like, like solar or, or wind. 
People are willing to put their money. All we need to do is to set up the policy to create that opportunity for investors to come in, build their plants, and be able to recover their investment. In the interim, what we are producing from Kainji and um, in all the places we are producing our farm, we can then supply them to other areas, and uh, especially those parts of the country that cost recovery may be a little bit more difficult. So government can focus, have enough, but give the people, private sector to build plants and then recover their cost to those who are willing to pay the cost. Why is this an impossible thing to do? So it, is, it has nothing to do that Nigeria, it is just the policy environment and the ability to keep your promises. They promised uh, Professor Barton and Geometric, build this plant and we'll lead you to, 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 to supply electricity. Well, I, I don't mean when to interrupt it, you again, uh, Mazi Sam, but I mean, you know, th there seems to be, I mean, the way that you're putting it, it, it sounds very simple, but there, there seem to be much more complex issues that afflict policy making and policy implementation in this country. And my sense is that unless you identify those, Whatever ideas you have are going to be hamstrung, just like all the other people who've come up with very good ideas and people we've had on this program who have not been able to do it. There is a tectonic clash somewhere. There, is, there are contradictions that torment Nigeria, and if you don't identify them, you're not going to solve the problem. Charles, I have grown in this country and have been involved in several activities the people that set up a rice television, several years ago, you didn't think there was going to be a, a rice television until there was a deregulation. And that deregulation was carried through, and private sector was allowed to set up channels, television, set up a rice, set up AIT, TVC, and the rest of them. That is what we need, the policy environment. There were people who opposed it. There were people who didn't want us to have uh, a deregulation or privatization or commercialization. So, Charles, it's, it's a human issue. We are not different from Americans or from British people. We are created by the same God, given the same line of intellect. It's our ability to do it. Take away selfishness. Take away self-centeredness. People do things here out of selfishness. If it won't profit them, they will not let it done. It is leadership. And that is why this leadership we're talking about is not going to be a one-man leadership. Like-minded people from the north, from the south, from the east, banding together to be able to break what it is, what is that is stopping Nigeria from being what it is. It's lack of, it's lo, lo, lack of enlightened leadership. I do not see what else. And willing, willingness to take the risk and have the courage to, whatever the consequences are, are, but you want to do what is right. If people are not doing their job, you take them out and put somebody who knows how to do the job. But you keep somebody on the job, for four years he has not performed, he's on the job. Seven years he's on the job. How will it change? There are no measurements of performance, no, keep, no keep KPIs. And these KPIs are not measured, and people are rewarded or punished for not meeting. How can the system grow? This was not imposed on us by God. It's not a law. It's not a cause. It's human nature. It's the lack of the leadership, with the political leadership we seem to have had, have been narrow-minded, narrow-focused, thinking more about themselves and their, and their group without looking at what is best for the country. That's my say reason, that you're, I have here, to say, uh, Mazi Sam, that you're a very inspirational speaker, and I hope that people who are listening are also inspired by what you're saying. I want to thank you very much indeed. Mazi Sam Ohwebunwa is the founder of the new Nigeria group, a group that's attempting to transform this country as we head towards the 2023 elections. That's it for this edition of The Arise Interview. Join us again tomorrow. From me and the entire team here in Abuja and Lagos, bye-bye and thank you for watching.